Good morning, friends, and welcome to the Tuesday Morning Devotional from First United Methodist Church of Maumel. I'm Aubrietta Jones. I'm glad to get to share this time with you. People will be joining us this morning, and they'll be joining us throughout the week, in the evenings, whenever. It doesn't matter. I'm glad we get to spend a little time in Scripture. As people join in with us, I'm going to go ahead and share some announcements about things that are happening in the life of the church. We are excited about our United Methodist Men's Golf Tournament. This last week, there was a notice in the bulletin to make sure you save the date for June 9th. And I see B. Watson has joined us this morning. Good morning, B. I'm glad you're with us. Um, the golf tournament on June 9th is a fundraising opportunity for United Methodist Men. And they use the monies to support youth ministries and to support needs in the Maumel community. It's a great opportunity to do some good and get some good golfing in. If you'd like more information about how to put a team together and register for the golf tournament, you can call the church office and we will get you connected where you need to go. We also are collecting for our tornado victims, uh, or I should say tornado survivors, because they're making it and uh, that's how we see them. But our tornado survivors in this area need diapers and wipes and feminine hygiene products. And so we are collecting those in the welcome center of the church right now. You are welcome to drop some off in the Welcome Center at worship or in the middle of the week. Good morning, Jean. I see that you have joined us. We have VBS coming up June 4th through 8th. It's a busy time in the life of the church. I want to be sure that you hear and know Wednesday evening, May 3rd at 6.30 p.m. in our Family Life Center, we are having a charge conference, which means our district superintendent is coming to conduct a meeting and an official formal vote here at our church about whether or not to remain affiliated with the United Methodist Church. So that is a vote for disaffiliation from the United Methodist Church. Now that is the last vote at the local church level. We will vote here and then if the vote passes, uh, in other words, if people vote in favor of the motion that will be made, then we will go on and that vote will be considered for ratification at charge at our annual conference session, a special session, May 13th in Hot Springs. If the vote does not pass, then that failed vote ends the process for us and our congregation will remain United Methodist. So I want to let you know that's happening. I encourage you to come early. Make sure you have a spot. Make sure you have a seat. Uh, there may be a cutoff time to pass out those ballots. Make sure you're in line by 630. That's what our discernment team is saying is important to let you know, be in line at 630. So that's what's going on in the life of the church right now. Karen, I'm glad you've joined us today. Welcome. I'm going to read for you all 1 Corinthians 15, 17 through 20. I did decide that I've been a little bit windy in some of these others, and I've tried to cover too many scriptures. So I'm going to shorten my text a little today, and we'll just move through this chapter at a little slower pace. And that's what we're going to do. 1 Corinthians 15, beginning with verse 17. We're continuing with our study of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Good morning, Daryl. Glad you're with us today. And here is the reading. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only in, for in this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And so that's our reading for today. And um, as we go through this uh, book of 1 Corinthians or this chapter of 1 Corinthians, just to review what we've already talked about, the Corinthian church had different ideas about the resurrection of the dead. Resurrection of the dead is an important Christian teaching. It's there in the Apostles' Creed. If you grew up in a traditional worship service, you might have said that Apostles' Creed, we believe in the resurrection of the body. And so Paul is trying to help them understand the importance of this. And apparently some of them perhaps are under the impression, we gather from what Paul says to them, maybe they're under the impression that Jesus did rise from the dead, but that nobody else does. Well, think about how inharmonious that is with Jesus's teachings throughout his ministry. 
in John 15, Jesus tells his disciples that I will prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and I will take you to myself so that where I am there, you may be also. He says that in John 15. And when Jesus says that, clearly there's going to be unity and an ability to walk with Jesus, to be with Jesus. And that doesn't really make any sense. If Jesus is physically raised from the dead and we are what spirit beings or maybe we nothing happens to us and when we die our bodies simply lay in a grave um, that doesn't make any sense jesus predicted his own death and resurrection many many times three times in the gospel of mark four times in the gospel of matthew several times in the gospel of john and then the gospel of luke has several predictions as well that come from the gospel or are related to the ones in the gospel of matthew so there's numerous times jesus says he's going to die and he's going to rise from the dead and it's very clear once in a while somebody will say that they respect jesus but they don't believe he was god's son and they don't think he rose from the dead well he said those things about himself so he did die and rise from the dead and it's difficult to respect him without believing what he says about himself because that's a that's a dramatic claim jesus is either a liar or a lunatic or he's the lord as uh, one well-known christian author said uh, because that dramatic claim uh, puts into question everything he says unless it's true and of course, we believe it is true that Jesus physically rose from the dead. And then because we are to be in heaven with him forever, we believe we physically rise from the dead because of what Jesus said. Now, beloved, that is good news for us. And the fact that the Corinthian church was wrestling with these truths brings an important fact to our view, um, it, it challenges us. Uh, the Corinthians wanted to put a barrier or a limit in front of what God could do. God could raise Jesus from the dead, but he's not going to raise us from the dead. That's kind of their thought process. And our thought processes for God are sometimes the same. God can redeem that person, but you know, this other person's probably too far gone, um, or we don't hold out hope for another person who maybe has done really atrocious things to be redeemed by God. Or perhaps we believe that God uses our friends and neighbors to do great things in the world, but we decide that he won't use us. And those are some examples of limits that we put on what God can do. And of course, there are still Christians today uh, or followers of Jesus today that really struggle with the idea of a bodily resurrection. I, I address this every Easter because every Easter, I think at least once a year, someone needs to tell their congregation they really believe in the physical resurrection of the body. And so uh, this is, this is a, a core Christian teaching. And our resurrection unites us with Jesus in his resurrection. You can't have one without the other. And this also shows us the incredible power of God. It's easier perhaps to think that Jesus as the son of God would be risen from the dead because he's so deserving, he's so good, he's so perfect. And because uh, the fullness of God dwells in him in a way that we can't fully even comprehend. But we sinful, fallen, often less than perfect, often petty, often selfish, the idea that we are going to be raised from the dead, uh, that is amazing. And it just puts upon our hearts a new awareness of God's absolute power over life and death and God's deep love for us through no goodness of our own, through no worthiness of our own, through no sinlessness of our own, we will be raised from the dead. And I don't know about you, but that makes me want to follow God even more in this life because he is so generous and so good to all of us. While I was talking, lots of people joined us this morning. I'm thankful for Barbara and Faye and Sheila and James. And I, if I missed anybody, I'm still thankful for you, but I'm glad that you're with us today. And let's go to God in prayer. God, we thank you and we praise you for your faithfulness and for your love. We thank you for the mystery and the miracle of the resurrection of the dead, the resurrection of the body. God, we don't deserve that kind of a gift. We don't deserve any gift that you've given us. Help us 
to remember the resurrection of the body as a sign and as a reminder that we can put full trust in you. Because without our ability to raise ourselves, without any worthiness on our part to be raised from the dead, without the goodness and the perfect holiness of Jesus fully restored within us, we still will be raised from the dead. And we pray, God, that this news would inspire us to open our hearts up to you more and more and allow you to work on us, allow you to deal with our sins and our failings. We pray, God, that this great miracle that is coming to each and every one of us is is so powerful in our hearts and minds that it allows us to trust you more with all the little miracles we need in our daily lives and with the interventions we need in our daily lives. Help us, God, to put everything in life in your hands because in the life to come, without any ability to raise ourselves up, we who will be completely dead will then be fully alive with you. We love you and we praise you, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Glad to get to be with you today. I hope I see you again soon. Take care.